Hey, good morning, Pest Geeks. Well, it's 6 a.m. I went to bed like at 1 because uh, I got here to the Paul J. Bello Company. I want you to check this out. This is my view this morning from my hotel. Man, I might go for a little walk, except breakfast starts at 7 and the conference starts at 8. And you know, let me, so you guys can enjoy the view while I enjoy the view. So I got in at uh, about 6.30 yesterday from Pest Management University. I'm in uh, Deerfield Beach at the Paul J. Bello Conference. And I, about one or 12 o'clock, the, the uh, PMU ended. And then I, Damien Google with um, uh, Armor Shield uh, Pest Control said, hey man, you wanna have lunch? So we went out to lunch and a whole bunch of guys started showing up. Hey, you know, Frank's gonna be here. So about three other guys um, showed up and, and we had lunch and by the time I got out of there, it was like three o'clock and it was a three hour something drive to three and a half hour drive to Deerfield. So I get here and run upstairs and everybody's like, hey man, you here yet? You know, let's go have dinner. So I'm like, okay. So I, I went ahead and got up to the hotel, changed went down and we walked to dinner and had dinner and then we got back here and we all started talking and Dennis Cucho was White House, we started smoking a cigar. Before you know it, that was like 11.30 midnight. So I'm like, ah, I'm too wired. I can't go to sleep. I'm just freaking wired. I had a coffee. I should have had a scotch and I uh, had a coffee and, um, and I had a cigar and then I'm um, talking to all these guys and Jose so, uh, Salerno from, from New Jersey got here and Gustavo Hernandez and then we started talking and before you know it, it's 1 a.m. and I'm like, dude, we gotta get to bed. So, went to bed, but let me tell you guys, um, so I'm, I'm uh, about four hours of sleep. I got up about 5.30 and BMU had been, what an amazing experience at Pest Management University. I'm going to recommend, man, anybody that has a technician that is serious about them growing and you growing, that you come with them and you send them. Uh, it's just an amazing experience overall. Um, the master's class is a combination of the it's a reinforcement and a reevaluation and a prep for your termite license or your WDO license. Certification in Florida, we don't have license. We have certification. Uh, the license belongs to the business. And if you, you come to the um, introduction of termites and then you come to WDO, well, the master's class is a combination of two reinforcing everything. So I probably retain maybe about 30 to 50% of the first two, if I'm lucky. And then by the time I finished this class, I probably retained about 80 to 90%. So it's pretty good Then they prep you. you. You work on a prep prior to that, to the exam that's focused on the exam, the state exam. Uh, Paul Mitola gave that for about an hour afterwards and then they gave the test. Uh, I didn't take the test because I didn't qualify yet. I just wanted to take PMU to really understand the um, everything, the ins and out of the legal part and the real uh, entomological part and the biological part and then uh, a lot of the structural because PMU does have a practical uh, how to actually perform the treatments. So I did that and um, you know, for me, while I was sitting there through the masters, I was a ball of emotion. I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional guy. And I was a ball of emotions between being excited about this new thing in my life, uh, going in a new direction for a business, where now we're a full service company after this, we'll be, once I get my certification done, you know, we're gonna be GHP, general residential pest control, commercial pest control, uh, we're gonna be lawn and ornamental pest control, and then now termite. 
and uh, WDO certified. Uh, and so we're going to be a full service pest control company. So my, I got a GHP tech, I got a lawn tech, and I'm going to be the termite tech for probably about maybe six months to a year until I get a ton of experience under my belt to be able to really train a guy and have a, another technician added on and then I'll be cross training some of my other techs to help um, to do this and but the emotional part is that you're both excited and scared at the same time because it's totally new for me um, GHP was easy because I came from LNO so I'm talking to all the guys that do LNO there and the teachers and all that and says bro if you got LNO termite exam is a breeze because LNO is way more complicated uh, than termite is from from a, a perspective of what you have to memorize for the exam okay not the practical world thing but for the exam so ah uh, so I am worried I'm like dang all this litigation that could happen all the problems and you're like scared to death and then at the same time, you're looking at all these guys and you're looking at what happened during the course. And you got guys that have been doing this for 15 termites, 15, 20 years. And they're missing things. And they're missing things on the paper. They're missing things on the drawing. They're missing things on the calculations. They're missing things. And I'm thinking, dang, if these guys that have been doing it for 15 years are missing things, what the heck can I expect? I need to be on my A game. And at the same time, I'm humbled because they've been doing it for 15, 20 years and they're missing things. So it's both all these emotions, all these thoughts, everything that, that, that's happening. Um, and then I'm thankful that I'm here at the, at the Paul J. Bello because now I get to do some business training that's really gonna help my business. And um, I believe in just getting all the training, all the knowledge I can. I'm having great conversations with guys that are having successful businesses, um, just as successful as mine. Uh, I was last night with Jose and Gustavo, you know, they've got two techs each. Uh, Jose's got his son as techs, uh, which are older already, and, um, and himself. And then I've got two techs and Gustavo has two techs. So it's kind of like we're all struggling to get past that two tech, you know, get past that half million uh, mark and grow from there. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, and uh, I was with Damien yesterday, he's got one tech, you know, and, you know, he's trying to grow from there. So guys, it's, it's a real hard struggle. We're having deep conversations about the real struggles. Um, it's not easy going to that, from that 300 to 400 to 500 and I know it gets so easier it's gotten easier for me uh, from the hiring perspective of what I need and how I need to grow and learning how to hire um, which is the hardest part and getting through that training aspect and, and developing the protocols and developing the system and and fine-tuning your systems to the point where you now have systems for systems, <laughs> for everything. And you can now streamline, which is what I'm doing with my podcast. I hired a part-time, um, my, my, my friend and, and my business partner in other areas, I hired him on to do part-time right now for about 20 hours a week, all of this production that I'm doing for all this stuff, take it off my back so that I can focus on this training, so that I can focus on the termite, so that I can focus on making more content and we're, we're podcasting now five days a week. Uh, I was doing seven, it's too much. I wanna take a break on the weekends. I wanna, I wanna exemplify in my business what I now believe, um, that all my people should have their time off, their personal time off, that they should um, like work-life balance. So I said, let's only focus on Monday through Friday. We're not gonna publish on Saturday and Sunday. Um, yes, it's gonna hurt the ratings. Yes, it's gonna drop the numbers. But numbers and money and isn't everything. We, we make it up in more content along the way. It's going to slow us down. A lot of the things that I've done intentionally has slowed us down. But it has slowed us down 
to a healthy perspective um, because I am hard driving and I was up talking to all these guys till one in the morning. Here I am waking up and I'm a six. I'm on four and a half hours of sleep, uh, five hours. I can function on that for a couple of days and then I want to do my six to seven, which is where I'm, I'm optimal at getting my six to seven hours of sleep. So, I mean, I'm just enjoying this um, tremendously. Going to see the sunrise. I, you know, I don't see sunrises uh, from my house. Um, so this is just, check out this view, bro. This thing is, look at that. That's the pool down there. And uh, that view, the sun is coming up. So just taking some of this in, guys, that, man, you don't get to... To enjoy a whole lot because you're working all the time and you're just in the grind and the family so I'm taking this as a mini vacation for I guess two days um, and then I'm thinking of going over to the west coast in a couple of weeks to recuperate from all this and actually just take a weekend off for me that I don't do anything um, here I am it's Saturday and I'm recording this and I just you know um, I got a lot of things I got a lot of questions in my mind of things now that I have to reconciliate of what jobs I'm going to walk away from. Uh, evaluations, um, as everything is now assessment based. Um, whether I walk away, whether we take it on, having the conversations with my lawyers now on this, uh, Mark, and then uh, I'm using Mark Ruff for those of you who are needing in Florida contracts or needing an attorney to represent you who understands the pest control industry who litigates in the pest control industry who defends major pest control companies in the pest control industry um, I highly recommend that you contact him um, and and have him drop your contracts and one of the things that he expressed that I understood is that you write you can copy a competitor's contract the problem is if you ever have anything that is contested and it's documented that you did not use an attorney to write your contract and you didn't get legal representation, you're left open for litigation. Even if the contract is perfect, ironclad, you copied it, you leave yourself open for litigation. So um, all of this stuff we're now uh, considering and you know I'm discussing it in my head with my CMO, my CFO, uh, and who are those guys? Those are all the guys in my head that I have to consult because I don't have any of those guys on my staff. I got to make these decisions myself. I'm getting counsel from Joe, uh, who does, Joe Jonovich, who does consulting, who's been in the industry 20 something years, grew up in this industry. Father owned the business, he owned the business, he was a technical director. You know, he's a, an entomologist. Um, so now he's doing consulting, he's been a distributor, um, an actual distributor on the distribution business. So he understands all the ins and outs of this industry, and I'm using him as a consultant. Um, we've had a great dinners and great discussions uh, about things other than just what I need, but things that can help you guys, and we had a great dinner, which I'm gonna publish next week. Um, I was with Sam Roman um, of Commando, uh, Pest and Wildlife, and we've got a dinner interview that I taped. Um, so we've got a lot going on and a lot of people are, are being blessed. So many students that I'm hearing from, man, that are just getting blessed by the podcast because they're starting to understand the business side. And, and, and I think it's healthy for your people, my people, to understand the business of pest control. I, I think it creates empathy. I think they can understand, they can be in your shoes. I, like my guys, man, they like, man, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes all the stuff that you got to deal with um, the openness I think creates a, a real empathy and understanding uh, from technicians and people in the industry to say this is what it's really like to be an owner um, I think it's healthy I think it's healthy that I talk about it and that we have the conversations honestly and openly uh, about the expectations of what it's really like a lot of these guys they go oh, the owners are making all the money and they don't see all the struggles. They don't see all the pain. They don't see all the suffering. They don't see all the things that you go through um, to make a job happen for them, to make sure that their paycheck is there every week, to make payroll. 
and when it's Thursday and you're running to the bank to make deposits every week, to making sure that they're getting paid on time, that you try by all means not to cut their hours because things get difficult. Things have gotten very difficult for us. We lost 30 to 40% of our business during COVID overnight, just dried up, government contracts ceased um, that I had that were really nice and solid. Um, 30% of our business was roach service for apartments, individual units. When a couple making $36,000 a year combined uh, with between husband and wife living in an apartment that the landlord is supposed to be taking care of that roach problem and is so out of control because he's paying a dollar a unit and the guy's coming in and spraying the floor and dropping a little drops of bait and they got roaches everywhere and they got to now pay us, you know, 335 bucks for a service to control their roaches, that's their weak pay. And they had to decide, do we keep fogging and keep holding it at bay until we can no longer do it? By the time they call us, it's out of control completely. And now they've had to figure out how they're gonna pay it. It's tough. And that's where our business is in Miami. It's a lot of those people. Uh, roach service became a big part of our business. My, it used to be 95% luxury l &O, and when I got into GHP, our business is about 60% GHP. Now it keeps growing. Uh, it is growing. It's becoming an overrode uh, lawn and ornamental for the first time. Uh, so now we're going to do termites. So we got to. I got to do termites because I got to be a full service to get some of that business back and recover it and, and make additional revenue. So that's what I'm taking on. I've avoided it because we were fine. We didn't have to. Uh, I didn't have to do termites. LNO and GHP was was more than enough. So let me grab my coffee. I know I made a cup of coffee. This this room is amazing, bro. Um, I, I It's a mess right now, but I got a suite. Uh, it's a sweet suite. It's got two bathrooms, two showers. Check it out. Ignore the mess. This is a great place. Just I just came in last night. I just barely unpacked. I threw everything on one bed, threw everything. No, I did not do a termite inspection. I didn't care because I was exhausted. Where the heck is my coffee? Um, I didn't care. Um, I can always put all that in a bag and, and use, um, what do you call it, a Nuvon strip and the heck with it. Uh, call it a day. Um, everybody was waiting for me like, when are you going to get here? When are you going to get here? Paul, Paul downstairs and his wife, uh, Bello, and uh, everybody. And what a great bunch of people, bro, that are coming to this event. Um, we're coming here with a different perspective. Not from a technical side. There is going to be some technical, uh, but a lot of the business side. And Paul built a nice big company before, and you know, of course, he wrote half of the part two of the cockroach combat manual and the bed bug manual, and part of the Termidor label. And you know, the guy is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to, you know, he defends clients, uh, homeowners uh, in litigation. He represents them uh, as expert witness in court um that guy's got a wealth of now doc frischman is going to be here uh you know my hero doc uh austin frischman is going to be here so man i'm hoping he's going to do a podcast if he'll do a podcast i'm going to be tickled to death so i'm going to see how i can sucker him into that um you can't sucker doc into anything uh the guy is the guy was doing pest control before i was born um uh, he was in this i think he graduated with a phd before i was born um, so he's getting up there in age, man. We're not going to have him around for much longer. That's just a reality of life. Um, you know, you get old and, and you die. And um, I want to, I, I really appreciate people like that in that age that they're still giving in their 80s. That guy is still teaching, doing conferences. Uh, that's what I want to be in my 80s. Um, you know, that's where I, I want to be giving uh, and still contributing somehow to society, not just vegging in a chair somewhere, deciding I'm going to go off in a sunset. Uh, go, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory. Uh, that's for sure. So uh, a lot of this stuff, bro, is just scary. It's humbling. Um, like I said, I just sat there in class just thinking, God, if these guys are getting it wrong, you know, what does that say for me? That's humbling, bro. That's 
reflecting saying, do I got what it takes uh, to do this? To, to get into this new area, man, can I stomach this? Um, but if you do it right, from a lot of the guys that I've talked to, especially Paul Bello, you do your job right and, and you care and you, you take the time to do it right, you give your people the time to do it right. That's the biggest problem when there's litigation is you never gave the inspector enough time to do his job right to really inspect. You didn't allow your salesperson to walk away from a bad deal because, you know, the commission is everything and getting the contract is everything. And if he doesn't close, then his quota numbers go down. And if he's getting a lot of bad leads that month and he just turns them down, then he takes a hit. Um, talking to some owners that he, they pay their people to walk away um, from this. So doing the good inspection, being thorough, you know, I'm ordering... I've, I've invested already, I'm investing $5,000 in diagnostic equipment alone. The Termitech, sonar, the, you know, the Timec, um, moisture meter, the camera, the digital camera for, um, uh, for heat and um, uh, the flare camera, you know, and plus all the miscellaneous, that, you know, that's, that's almost five grand right there. Um, and equipment just so I can have tools to help me diagnose and validate what I'm finding. And your best tool is your head, what you know about that biology, how that insect is gonna behave. Then your second tool is your eyes. You gotta protect your eyes, guys, especially in pest control. If you lose your eyes, um, that's your number one tool to be able to identify to evaluate, to see what is happening around you. So when you're doing PPE, protect your eyes. When you're drilling, protect your eyes. Um, I gotta use contact lenses, I gotta use glasses. Uh, it's my 6.30 alarm. I got I, I got two alarms, I actually have three alarms. I got three phones with me. And, and if one fails, it's 6.30. So I'm gonna get ready to finish my yoga. There's my yoga mat. I was doing yoga this morning and, and stretching out because uh, I got to do that every morning. And I got to do my legs because I'm they're a little cramped, uh, especially from a lot of driving, from four hours of driving. Um, you know, guys, it's just, there's a lot. There's a lot to this. Plus, you got to stay on top of everything that's going on in your business and in the sales and the customers. And if there's problems, luckily, I haven't had a single problem to deal with all week. That's beautiful, man. When you hire, learn to hire the right people, when there is that communication, where there's the affinity. I mean, my guy called me. There was, you know, one question he had all day yesterday. Uh, and then he called me at the end of the day to let me know everything was okay, that, you know, he was on his way home and everything was done. Um, a follow-up that I forgot to post, uh, a, back, uh, a work order for a follow-up. He remembered, he went and did it anyway without a work order. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's great to have people like that, but that takes skill, that takes practice, that took, you know, two years of me learning how to hire, um, to try to get and, and learning how to teach and coach. Look at that sun cracking up at the end of that horizon over there, 6.30 in the morning right now, and the sun is coming up. It's a beautiful thing. I'm just... I have to learn to take this in, um, to, to observe this because, man, the days get short. My kids, uh, before I blink, my daughter is 11, my son is, is six years old, he's gonna be seven in a month. Seven years old and I blinked and they're growing up and I don't wanna miss that. So I've slowed myself down, believe it or not, it's like, bro, how do you do five podcasts? How do you, do all this study, how do you do all this and still have time for your kids? It's very simple. I chose to make less money myself, uh, to have more time to over hire, make less money so I can have time to do all this to grow, to invest in myself. I had to invest in my health in these last three years because it was deteriorating from all the work I was doing, working 16, 18 hour days, nonstop in the field physically and then mentally and then emotionally, you burn out. I almost burned out. The work of doing this isn't 
but I can't do everything. So I decided I'm going to get rid completely of the tech work. I don't do tech work. I decided I got some guys that are doing tech work still while they're growing, but they're not doing a podcast. They're not doing new ventures. They're not trying to grow as much as I am. Um, I'm investing all of this because I want to grow. I want to grow to the place where I can decide I can record a podcast all day long. I can go teaching. Right now I'm creating a curriculum. I just, as I was sitting there listening to all the technicians, listening to the feedback, listening to things, I'm listening all the time to people. I said the real big need immediately is new technician training and especially safety training in um, speaking to Alan Fugler about claims. Man, I, 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 I like, I had to go back and reflect. I said, how much am I, of this am I not doing in my business to protect my and people, to protect myself, uh, to protect the company? More things that I got to go back to the drawing board and I'll redo. I'm going to do some safety training, more safety training when I get back with my people. Um, I'm putting together a safety course. I already got a lot of this material. I'm finishing it. Uh, so we're going to add the safety course. We might be doing it in person uh, now, starting in a couple of months, because I love training, I love teaching, I love doing this, and the business is growing. So um, I, I got a part-time editor and some social media to post all this on social media, to edit it, to post the podcast. I mean, we're posting two podcasts right now, The Godly Business. Check out Godly Business on Facebook. It is, it is just for business. People that are Christians, that are believers uh, that want to learn. I mean, I had some ethical things that came up during the classes, uh, during PMU, that I thought about and I said, you know, I see a lot of this going on. I, I can't participate in that in the industry. I can't be a part of that as being a believer. It's the ethics of it, the optics. So even the thought of it, some of it was really bad. So. A lot of things opened up to me, new things. I, I got to go back now from things I thought I knew, go back to a drawing board, rewrite some things, do it, do it better, um, because I want to be better. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I, I, I still, I just admit that I have uh, some things that I need to make sure this is solid, like certain things I need in writing from my technicians, uh, taking pictures of them in uniform and validating that they did know about PP because they're wearing it in a picture. So they can't tell me, I don't know what a goggle looks like. I don't know what a respirator looks like. I can't make up excuses. They got the respirators in their vehicle. They got the gloves in all the vehicles. We got gloves in the warehouse. They're just go in and get it. Um, you know, they got booties, um, you know, goggles, everything that they need. They've got a, like, they've got a personal protection bag that I made up for them putting it in writing that they, they did receive the PPE. That's, I don't have that, that they received the PPE. I got, they can receive the PPE training. I need a document that says, I got the PPE in my hands, documenting it, that it's in my vehicle, it's there. Um, and things like that, just little things like that, that you overlook, that you say, well, it's not a big deal. I mean, you know, they got, you can't enforce. Now in Florida, DAX and the EPA is starting to enforce that they you validate that there are wearing it in the field so EPA rules are getting with OSHA uh, are getting stricter where OSHA says you've got to validate that they're wearing it. and if you catch them not wearing it you got to write them up and you got to protect yourself you catch your people not wearing PPE um, that's how strict it's getting uh, with worker protection so those are things that we need to do guys um, in our industry, uh, things that we can do better. We can always do something better um, every day. We can always improve daily. If we can only improve 1% in a year, man, that's, you know, and, and improve 1% to 3% a year on something. It's better than nothing at all. A little bit better this year than it was last year. Marginal improvements monthly. 1% monthly is 10 to 12 percent a year better that you do something and evaluating and and it's a balancing act it's never balanced it's a balancing act so guys um i'm gonna enjoy this morning i'm gonna finish my yoga now i'm gonna roll out the rest of my back i'm gonna roll out my legs i'm gonna take a shower i'm gonna go down to breakfast 
and I'm gonna enjoy the Paul J. Bello conference. And then the afternoon, I'm gonna spend it on the beach. Maybe I'll maybe do a podcast from the beach. I don't have my, oh yeah, I do have my blue chair. I, I, I think I brought it. If I don't, I have my green chair and my red chair. So it might be a red chair today you might get from the beach. After, and I'm gonna try to record some podcasts with some of the guys here, they're really into it. Some of the guys are, you know, about the microphone and the camera and they're like freaking out and what if I say the wrong thing? And I say the wrong thing all the time. Uh, I'm a walking enigma. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not to worry about that, guys. So, hey, this is Strength the Pest Geek wishing you a spectacular day, guys.